Hey, good to see you again. Rob Napolitano here. Welcome to Thriving Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis. I'm redoing the debt crisis content because I delivered that last week and it didn't come out as good as I wanted it to come out. So I really want to deliver because I think this is really important, this topic and this content. So I really didn't do it justice last time. So I want to take another stab at it so I can certainly deliver to you what I feel is important. You see, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Einstein said that. He said those that understand interest, earn it. And those that don't, pay it. And it's increasingly important to know about interest, money, banking, and debt, because we are holistically being attacked. And that debt is encumbering our freedoms, our freedom of lifestyle, our freedom of movement, our freedoms of choice, our freedom of speech. Every type of freedoms that we have is being encumbered by debt. And it's debt that is the cancer in our system. And so we have to understand that. But why do we not understand how banking works? I'm going to show you a brief video. I love this video because this is what we understand and what we've been taught about banking. Honey, how about the 20 bucks you owe me? Oh, yeah. Well, I only got 10, so here's 10 and I owe you 10. Thanks. Hey, Mo, you owe me 20. Well, here's 10 and I'll owe you 10. Uh-uh, you owe me 20. Here's 10 and I owe you 10. Here's the 10 I owe you. Here's the 10 I owe you. Here's the 10 I owe you. Good, now we're all even. I love that video because that's how we're taught about what... Uh, how we're taught about what uh, banking system, how it works and, and what it's all about and what we know about banking. And there is a close tie between central banks, governments and commercial banks, but it goes beyond that. How do I know it goes beyond that? Because, you know, I went through my own personal strife back in 2008 in the great financial crisis when I was thriving in my business and then I was hit because And the reason why I was hit with financial strife is because I was looking in the rear view mirror while driving forward, which is what most of us are doing. Driving by looking in the rear view mirror is the wrong way to do this. And most investors do it that way. We need to be looking forward. Okay, so I didn't see what was coming. I didn't see the headwinds. I didn't see what was coming at me. And therefore, I crashed. So I went through chapter eight. I'm sorry, a chapter 13 in 2008. I went through chapter 13 in 2008 and I lost everything and had to survive. So I had to learn how to change my view, look forward. So I went to law school, learned how the uh, legal system worked and I wanted to go after my creditors for illegally foreclosing on me. I prepared my defenses. I became educated. I struck at their weaknesses and I won two big lawsuits against two of the largest banks in the world. And I came out at a higher net worth. And that's, you know, that experience, that's what got me, you know, looking inside of how the real banking system works. And I realized that the average person, people like you and me, that we're basically flying blind because these banks, they have the system set up for them to win and not for us to win. So when we invest, we're really at a disadvantage. So in order for me to change my vision and focus, to go from looking in the rear view mirror to looking into the windshield, I had to do three things. And this is what I want to share with you every week as I come here. I want to be able to help you to thrive for the chaos conflict. And that all starts with three simple steps, education, quick and decisive action, and then limiting your costs and your conflicts. Okay. Because the most prepared and the most alert wins every time. So I felt it was my personal and professional responsibility to share these insights with you every week, bringing you verified independent data so that you can make more informed decisions about what's best for you, your family, and protecting your assets and wealth. I want to empower you because there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of chaos, and it creates a lot of confusion and complexity out there. But the great thing about that is that that chaos brings a lot of disruptions, inefficiencies, and misalignments in the marketplace. And so that creates substantial opportunities to be seized by those that are informed and those that are ready to act quickly to jump on these. Now, if you want to take advantage of these inefficiencies and misalignments, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll share that with you, how to do that at the end of this presentation or at the end of this briefing. And then I'll show you how to go ahead and do that. But for now, let's get started on what I have for you here today. Anything you wanted to see in the past that I've done before, you can go and see on our website at 
www.gritrust.com and you can see the videos from before. But let's get started. Okay, so as I said, Einstein says the compound interest is the eighth one in the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those that don't, pay it. Great. Now, what I want to do today is I want to show you and feed you information about what you're being fed to make decisions on your portfolio versus what bankers and those inside on the finance side see and say. Now, this is what's being fed to your financial advisors. This is leading economic indicators that's put out by the Board of Economic Analysis. And this is basically the government faction that puts out all economic data independently, so they say. it's They say it's independent data that's putting out where the production, the output of our country and, and our economy is. Okay, let's take it at face value, but let's just look at these lines real quick. Here's what I really want you to see, that if you look at these lines here on the right, okay, uh, the, the, these gray shadowed areas is when we entered into recessions. And I don't want to get too deep into this. I want to keep this very high level and just look at the picture here that where these dips come. And when these dips come is when we go into recessions. Okay. Now, our economic output based on this chart has not been this low since the pandemic hit. People have been talking about recessions, recession, recession. I'm still a believer that we're going to hit into a, a, a recession. How hard it's going to be remains to be seen. It depends on how much the uh, central banks are going to get involved. But here's the latest economic data and the leading e e indicator, the leading economic indicators chart shows that it's really just trugging along, moving sideways for now. Now, what I do want to say about this is that when your advisors rely on this data, this data is rear view mirror data, meaning it's retrospective. This stuff already happened. Where other investors, where the insiders look forward, they want to see forward what's coming so they can better be prepared. In fact, there are some that are talking about it, that 60% of the global economy is in for a lost decade due to record debt. This comes from the World Bank economists, okay? Then we go through a vicious cycle, and we're going to go through a vicious cycle of debt and poverty where we're going to lose an entire decade. 60% of the global economy is in for this. Are you going to be a part of this? Are you going to lose and be a part of that, a victim of this? Or are you going to thrive through this? That's the question for you. Cantor Fitzgerald, their CEO, says, prepare for a very ugly two years of commercial real estate turmoil. Now, if you recall, if you've been watching these briefings or go back and look at some of the things that I said, I called it uh, long ago, and I've said it again at the beginning of this year, that this recession is going to look different from 2008, where we're going to see a crisis in real estate, yes, but it's going to be on the commercial side. Not because there's, you know, there, there, there's issues with commercial real estate. Yes, vacancies are low, but that's going to lead to a commercial debt crisis, where commercial debt is actually going to, the, the default of debt is actually going to skyrocket, which is going to lead to, lead to corporations dropping their debt or at least reducing their headcount. They're going to reduce their headcount so that they can support some of this debt, meaning people are going to lose their jobs. When people lose their jobs, they're going to be forced to not pay credit cards, not to afford to pay credit cards, and they're also not going to be afford, they're not also going to afford to pay their mortgages. And that's when it'll bleed over into the residential uh, mortgage crisis as well. So it'll go from commercial, big unemployment, and then into residential. So you're going to see a multi phased and extended period of turmoil. And Cantor Fitzgerald, this was just last week where they put this out, where they're going to see in the next two years. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how Blackstone, the, their bright, their trophy hedge fund, hosts the worst yearly performance in history. Now, if you don't know who Blackstone is, you probably shouldn't be on this briefing right now. Blackstone is one of the biggest in, investment bankers in the world, biggest hedge fund, and they are one of the pre preeminent and the predominant holders, the biggest holders of commercial real estate in the world, okay? They're big on commercial real estate. They just put out an article two days ago where they said that now they feel that commercial real estate has hit the bottom and everybody should jump in. I'm telling you, no, that's a sucker's bet. What they're saying there is we're losing a lot of money and we need dumb money to come into the marketplace so we can offload our risk to you so that we can get out 
unscathed. They're in trouble. And Bloomberg just reported on that last week as well. What else are we seeing out there that goes along with this theme of increased defaults? Well, Wells Fargo, they abandoned their iconic office tower in North Carolina because their loan losses are mounting. To the tune of, look at these numbers here. At the end of 2022, they had $189 million of loan losses, of commercial loans. By the end of 2023, the $189 million of booked losses increased to $3.4 billion. That's a 1,700% increase in loan losses that they're suffering and they're reporting in 12 months. And they have to abandon their iconic office tower. Watch out because you're going to start seeing headcount reduction coming next as well. So what does that mean? Where do these people get this from? Well, I'm going to show you one last piece here. This comes from Ray Dalio, uh, the former founder. Well, he's still the founder, but he's the former CEO of Bridgewater, but the original founder of Bridgewater, the most successful hedge fund in the world. And he looks at this, which is where all these people are looking at long-term debt cycles. Now, there's long-term, there's short-term debt cycles. We're going to do this real quick, and then we're going to move on from here. But the long-term debt cycle goes like this. Between five and five and 15 years, it takes to go through an expansion of credit. I'm sorry, 50 years it takes to go through an expansion of credit. And then once we get to the peak of the expansion of credit, it actually goes very quickly. It turns and takes two to three years of a depressionary phase where credit and confidence and, pre and, and uh, GDP and all this and the debt actually collapses. And then after that, it takes seven to 10 years to reflate again. So what I'm saying here is, yes, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but we're right at the top here at the peak where we're gonna go through a very dark time and we're gonna see debt collapse and it's going to completely encumber our freedoms, our, 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 our wealth. There's going to be a whole bunch of destruction of wealth and it's all going to fall on this curve. And this is not, you know, conspiracy theory. This is stuff that's happened throughout history, throughout uh, uh, generations. This has happened, you know, throughout legacies, okay? And throughout dynasties, this has happened. So this is just a repetition of what's gone on over and over and over again throughout the history of, uh, of humankind. So just to show you the magnitude of what we're up against coming in the next couple of years, Here's one last chart I'm going to show you where credit, uh, uh, commercial real estate debt to mature in the next five years is going to be the tune of $2.5 trillion. That's what's coming down the pike. That's how big this is going to be. And it's going to be a huge, huge, huge issue for people. So the question is for you, now that you're, you can see that you're being fed one piece of information while the insiders are looking at a different piece of information. What are you going to do with all of this? So look, in the end, we are living in an environment which is, you know, has a chaos, crisis, conflict, and complexity, and that creates a lot of confusion. Okay. But as I said before, that inside this climate, there's a ton of opportunity, but you have to be informed to make those decisions about which opportunities are real and which opportunities are right? There are plenty of opportunities out there being advertised, but they're not all real and they're not all right for you. You have to know the difference. Okay, so I want to try to give you some clarity and confidence so you can protect your assets and your wealth in a sound and efficient manner. So this is the first time I'm announcing this. That's why I want, I want to help you to get there. And I'm going to have another private session to give you a step-by-step -step of what you can do, because this is the blueprint of what I did to drive through, to, and to, to thrive through this environment. I want to give you a step-by-step -step blueprint of what I did to thrive in this environment. And I'm going to do that in another private session that's going to take less than an hour. It's free of charge. I'm not charging anybody to do this. And we're making preparations to do this. And the only place you can get access to this is here as you're listening to this. So write this down. You go to more, M-O-R-E dot G-R-I trust dot com. Get on that waiting list because we're still doing the preparations and still build, building it up. This is how brand new this is that I'm going to show you how to do this. We're just assembling 
all of the information in a way that's easily digestible. And so we're going to do this in the next 30 days. You jump on that uh, uh, link and from that link, put your name in there and then we'll get you into that private session. We're not advertising this out there. So part two is up to you. We want to hear from you and help you, but part two is up to you to take that quick and decisive action. So if you have any questions about anything that I brought up here, you know, I welcome the one-on-one -on -one conversation as well. If you want to give me a call, reach out, you know, not to, not to sell you anything, but just to be of service in, as well. So with all that, I wish all of you a pro prosperous day and I will see you next time. And I want to see you on that list so that I can get you the invite for that uh, private session we're going to have so I can give you that blueprint. All right. So have a great week and I'll see you next week. Take care.